Hi everybody and welcome to Cooking with Class at Johnson County Community College. I'm Emily Bierman and I want to introduce you to our guest chef today. This is Dan Pliska. How are you? Very well. You? I'm doing just fine, thanks. Now you're at the University Club at That's the University correct. of Missouri in Columbia. Yes. So you, you came a ways for us. We really appreciate your being here today. And tell us a little bit about how you got started cooking. Well, you know, I, I got started uh, many years ago. Uh, my mother and my grandma were great cooks, and I started as a dishwasher in, uh, outside of Washington, D.C., in Maryland. And I kind of just fell in love with the profession, and then I, so I decided to become a chef and just started trying to find the best kitchens to work in and traveled all throughout the country and Europe and learning my craft. Wonderful. And so you've been at the University Club for how long? Uh, Fourteen years now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you work with some of the students in our program here at Correct, JCCC. correct. We, I have uh, three apprentices right now, and we graduated two apprentices last year, and we're looking to bring some more on. That sounds so great. it's a great program. Now, who do you prepare food for? Uh, we prepare food over there for, actually, I have four kitchens, so we prepare food for a number of different folks. We have uh, uh, alumni, faculty, uh, guests who come. Uh, members, you know, so it is a, a university club, so it is a private club, mm -hmm. uh, and they have, a, of course, wedding receptions and so on and so forth, and then we have a lot of awards, dinners. We do things for uh, fraternity houses, too, on occasion. I have two fraternity houses I oversee, and, and uh, just uh, all different folks. That's great. Well, what are you going to make for us today? Well, today I'm going to uh, make a chocolate kiln-dried cherry bread pudding with uh, cocoa phyllo crisp, and for those adventurous foodies at home, I've got a couple of sauces and then the recipe pack of chocolate sauce and cream anglaise. So I'm not going to make those today, but I'm going to show how to decorate with those because I know that a lot of folks like to see how to make things look like a real uh, chef. Like, like a real chef, exactly. 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 So let's get started. Great. Okay, sounds good. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to get these um, ramekins, and these are called ramekins or souffle cups. We're going to get them ready to put our, our bread pudding in. Uh, one of the worst things you want to have to do, obviously, is when you're making something and you go to turn it out, it sticks in the, it sticks in the, in the, in the, in the, in the container. Mm -hmm. So what we do, we take a little soft butter, we kind of just go around and brush, brush, them all, brush them all down. And after we've brushed them all down, I've got some of these I've already done to save on a little time for the cameras and such. Okay. Uh, after we brush them all down, then we're going to coat them with sugar. And then we're going to put a little piece of parchment paper in the bottom of each one of them. Uh, that way, after the uh, bread pudding is baked, when I turn it out, there will be no, I just have to pass a knife around the outside, and there'll be no uh, danger, if you will, of it sticking on the bottom. Then I just take the paper off, and it'll be a, a, nice, uh, a nice little uh, bread pudding. That, then we'll garnish with a, a baked phyllo crisp, which is something a little different. I know a lot of folks have made bread pudding, but uh, mm -hmm. phyllo crisp is something that's kind of a little bit different, and I think uh, the viewers of the video are going to enjoy seeing that. Great. So, we have the parchment paper circles. Now we just stick them in each one of these uh, ramekins, if you will. Put them all the way down in there. You know, preparation is probably a big part of anything that you're yes, going to cook in the kitchen, yes. right? Mm-hmm. We call that mise en place. That's oh, a, I see. That's exactly. a special word, you know, special word. So I always tell people in my cooking classes, you know, if you learn one thing, learn mise en place, then you can go to all your friends and say, oh, I learned about mise en place, and they, everybody kind of gets a kick out of it. <laughs> now, that's a French term used yes. in the culinary industry. It means everything in its place. Okay. I see. But then to throw the foodies off, the people that know that, I like to tell them in German, because I, I worked in German, so it means Vorbereitung. So I tell them Vorbereitung, so that really, really kind of throws them off. a little, a little more intimidating. A little bit more intimidating. There you go. <laughs> okay. So I'm not going to do all this. I'm just going to show you how I do a couple of them. But the way I make the circles is I just take some parchment paper, and I kind of cut them all up, and then I just take one of these, and I just draw a ring around the bottom, and I cut them all out. So it's very simple. You can use wax paper, parchment paper. Um, then I'm going to put my sugar around this. This is the same what you would do for a, uh, basically for a souffle, a hot souffle too, except for you wouldn't put the paper in the bottom of it, okay? Okay. All right, so that's, that's an important difference. All the way. Let me make sure we get the sugar all the way around each one of these. Now, the reason I have some more cups here is because I'm going to take the same cups and I'm going to make the phyllo purse in them. I'm not phyllo purse, the phyllo crisp, cocoa phyllo crisp, okay? Okay. Over 
So, but first I'm gonna get the bread pudding in the oven done because, you know, talking about mise en place, this takes about two hours to bake, hour and a half to two hours. I, I hate to tell people exactly how long because everyone's oven's a little bit differently. You just wanna bake it really long and slow until it's, it's, it's completely, completely set through and then let it, uh, let it rest and then you can turn it out. So while you're doing that, you can, you can make your, your, your phyllo, phyllo crisp. You can also do these ahead of time and put, keep them in the refrigerator and, and put them in the microwave if you want to or, or reheat them in the slow oven. I see. All right, so now while that's going, we're going to uh, get ready to make our custard. Now the recipe that I have, I gave uh, on, the, on, the, on the DVD, mm -hmm. is using vanilla extract. But I brought something Again, I like to show a little technique. This is a vanilla bean. I know a lot of people don't know about these, so I kind of brought this just to show people and talk a little bit about this, give a little uh, lanyard, if you will, as we're, as we're working. Okay. Okay? So let me get going here. All right, so we have our bread. Now, the bread I use for this, this is brioche, okay? Brioche is, is a, um, a very uh, buttery French bread. You can use a Sally Lunn or any kind of a rich dough, but you don't want to use like a sourdough or anything with caraway seeds. Raisin bread would be good, but it has to be a rich, firm, good quality bread. You know, mm -hmm. you don't want to get uh, some cheap sandwich bread or anything like that, because then it's just not going to be No wonder bread. No. Okay. No. Okay. So, we have our milk. Or you can use half and half too, but in this recipe I use milk. We have our sugar. Now, what I do for the, uh, for the vanilla bean, even though this isn't in the recipe, it's in vanilla extract, I'll show you. You cut it in half on a cutting board, if you would. This is, this is a very clean table. And then you scrape it like this to get the seeds out of the pod. And then you just put all that into the Oh, the, uh, bean, the, the bean and the seeds and yeah. everything. Yeah, and then what okay. you have to do is when you, when you scald the milk, or the, or, the, or the heavy cream or the half and half, whatever you're using, you have to pull it off and let it steep like tea. So that kind of infuses the flavor of vanilla all through the, uh, the custard. So okay. is that going to create a stronger vanilla flavor than just oh, using yes. the extract? Oh, yes, yes, definitely. Okay. But, you know, a lot of people, it's, it's important to see that, like, this is a nice plump, plump bean. Sometimes you go to the grocery store, these are very expensive, and, and they'll be in, like, test tubes, and they'll be dried out. You don't want to get those dried out ones. You want to get a nice, nice plump one. I mean, it's still good, but it's better if they're, if they're uh, nice and moist. All right, so we're going to put this on, let it cook. While, while that's cooking, I'm going to get my eggs ready. Right. Any questions so far? Well, I was just going to ask about your eggs. Are those room temperature? Are they colder? Uh, well, usually they're, they're the colder... The, the cold eggs are better for this because when you sep I'm going to separate some of the yolks. And whenever you're separating eggs, it's easier when they're cold. Okay. Now, when you're making meringues or you want to get a lot of lift out of your eggs, you want to use room temperature eggs. Okay. So, good question, though. Good question. All right. All right. So we're going to put six eggs. Now, you notice what I do is I, 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 when a recipe calls for eggs, I always break the cap of the egg and I put all the egg into the mixture. Because if you, if you make a recipe, let's call it, say it calls for 30 eggs. Well, if you, if you don't do that, you may end up with like two or three ounces of egg whites that you don't have in your recipe. Mm -hmm. So it's important to do that. Okay? Also, eggs are, are, as we all know, along with raw chicken, are probably one of the most uh, dangerous foods, if you will, as far as being raw. So you have to make sure that after you work with raw eggs that you clean everything real well, wash your hands, and then you work with something else. Very okay. important. Okay, now we're going to separate the yolks. And a lot of cooks, I'll see them do it in their hands. This is kind of what, you know, I call it the, the grandmother style, you know, shell to shell. You know, you don't get the white all over your hands. It's a lot cleaner. Okay. And you're going to put the yolk in with the whole yeah, eggs. Yeah, that the, you've the, the whole broken. eggs and the yolks. And the reason we don't we use whole eggs and whole uh, or whole eggs and yolks is because the uh, the the yolk is a lot more richer than the white, and because of the fats in it, and uh, it, it it just makes it a lot more richer uh, richer custard. So. All right. 
And I'm going to walk over there and wash my hands and get rid of this stuff. All right, well, I've just washed my hands, so I'm going to go ahead and come back to the, uh, the bread pudding here. So we have our eggs, our yolks, sugar, milk, and vanilla over there. Mm -hmm. And I have some dried, kiln-dried cherries. Now, there's different kinds of kiln dried cherries. This is kind of a, a, a tart cherry, if you will. And what I do is I didn't do it for the, I'm not going to do it for the, for the show here today, but I, I cook some sugar, some water, and some, some rum. And then I, I brought, brought that to a boil, and I let these plump up in there so they get a really nice macerated, macerated flavor. Mm. So, okay. Just kind of mix that with the bread. Now, can you find dried cherries in the grocery yes, store? Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. It's the same. You know, you know, cran raisins? That's kind of the big thing in a lot of nutritional cooking these days. So. Right. Uh, it's kind of the same area as that. All right. So I'll set that over here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start to get ready to make the phyllo crisps. All right. Now phyllo is basically comes in the frozen food section. And it's used for um, a lot in Greek cooking. Baklava, spanikopita, Hungarian style strudel. It's a very thin, paper-thin dough, and you have to make sure you thaw it out, and you have to make sure when you're working with it that you keep it covered with a damp, damp, damp towel when you're working. So it'll dry out that quickly? It will. It will dry, dry out quickly. All right. So I've got some more. And again, in the... Because of the time factor, I'm not going to do all 12, which this recipe calls for. I'm just going to do three, show you three of them. Okay. Right. But you've already brushed those with butter as well. I've already brushed those with butter, correct. And now I'm also going to be watching my milk because watch pot won't boil. Don't watch it, boils over. That's <laughs> Especially with milk, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, what's, what's neat about this is I mix unsweetened cocoa powder with granulated sugar. And then I brush clarified butter onto the... Uh, onto the phyllo, and then crumple it up, and then bake it inside of the same uh, ramekins as the other ones in a hotter degree oven, 375 degrees, mm -hmm. okay? And it just makes a nice, nice uh, presentation on the top, and if you uh, wanna serve some ice cream on top of your bread pudding, and then put the phyllo crisp on top with some sauce around it, oh my God, it'll just be fantastic. It's like the whole night. Fantastic, right yeah, there. you could just skip dinner. I like the way you think, Dan. <laughs> Well, you know, people you. say, you like, you like desserts, I say, oh, you can start with desserts, have dinner, then finish with desserts. All right. Now, before I get started, the milk and cream is just about ready over here. So we're going to go ahead and get this going. I haven't unwrapped that yet, so that's fine. We'll get this in the oven, then we can work on our, back on our phyllo. Okay, now those vanilla seeds, you can see those floating mm -hmm. in the milk there. Right, and normally what I would do is I would turn that off and let it sit and then steep for a good 10, 10 minutes. In fact, some people do it and then put it in the refrigerator overnight and then bring it out and do it again to really just infuse that, that flavor real well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's okay to let it go in the refrigerator and then heat it again the next day? Yeah. yeah. Now we're going to take some of the hot milk and kind of put it into the, the uh, eggs and so we don't scramble the eggs. Now you notice what I did is I put the sugar in with the, um, with the milk. A lot, a lot of pastry chefs and chefs don't do that. They like to put it with the, with the eggs and mix it together. I like to do it because it makes it, it, makes it get hotter and a lot, a lot higher temperature. And if you're, if you're baking a custard or you want to get something hotter and cook it quicker, it works so much, so much faster because it, it brings up the temperature you know, to over 300 degrees, mm -hmm. whereas, uh, you know, you can only get water to, to the boiling point, which is 212. All right, so now we're going to put this back in there. So is that going to make the final texture of your custard a little smoother as well? Yes, yeah. That's another reason why we, we kind of heat the sh the, it up there and make sure that uh, the sugar basically dissolves. Okay. It dissolves really well. All right. Now we're going to strain that back in here. to get out the seat, the, the, basically the Because those vanilla the beans are still in there, yeah. Yeah. And also, for the scientific lovers out there, the egg white inside of the egg is a twisted part of the white that connects the yolk to the, to the, uh, 
to the shell and keeps the yolk in the middle of the egg so it when it when it, it won't break and break open and uh, that that's called the schlaza so that is perfectly edible but sometimes that creates like a little bit of lumps in there and stuff so i like to just make sure you get all that strained out of there okay all right it's a lovely yellow color oh yes it's, those are uh, those are good eggs too so so we're not just going to, have to mix this together. Now there's a couple, way to do, a couple ways to do this. Uh, in the recipe, I, 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 I call for putting everything in the cups and then pouring the custard in there. But a lot of times I'll mix it in here and let it sit so the, 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 the egg has enough time to really absorb, absorb the, uh, the, the custard mix. And then I can kind of meter it into the, into the cups. So the bread's really going to take on the flavor of everything exactly. you've got in the milk mix. Exactly. We'll just kind of pretend we've done that. <laughs> then we'll just go ahead and, and fill each one of these up, making sure to get some cherries. I only go about three quarters of the way full because then I'm going to put the chocolate inside. And then uh -huh. I'll, I'll put the custard back on top of it. So I, I kind of want to make sure I get the right amount in each one. Okay. And normally you would let this sit together for yeah. 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Uh, yeah, 10, 15 minutes. So. We're just going to fill them all up. And then we'll put the chocolate inside, then put them in the oven in a bain-marie. Okay, bain-marie. A lot of people don't know that term. Bain-marie means to cook in a water bath. Okay? Uh -huh. And we put this in this kind of a pan and cook it in a water bath so it cooks slowly and evenly. Because kind of like the, uh, the old... Uh, Motown song, what goes up must come down. You know, if you bake it hot, it comes up, then it falls down, then you get, it's all, texture's all shot. So when it comes to custards, cheesecakes, stuff like that, you want to bake them long and slow, and you don't want any expansion of the egg whites. So the water helps to distribute the heat more Exactly, evenly. evenly. Correct, correct. Which is really important when it comes to custards. All right. Now what I'm going to do... I'm going to put this chocolate inside. Now, this is Belgian chocolate. These are called pistoles, okay? Mm -hmm. But you can use any good quality chocolate chip that you can get. Uh, but you want to make sure that it's good quality. It doesn't have to be dark. This is dark, semi-sweet, 64%. But you can get milk chocolate if you want. You can use white chocolate, you know. Okay. Uh, you can change uh, the cherries to raisins or uh, different kinds of dried fruits if you want to. Okay. There's a lot oh, of so you could you use apricots or sure, prunes sure. or mm -hmm. something like that, yeah. I guess. Golden raisins are always nice, especially if you want to kind of make a more of a exotic flavor profile. Golden raisins, you know, is more synonymous with you know a lot of uh, Indian cooking and, and such. Okay. I want to make sure. We don't want to be chop. I'm never shy with chocolates, you know. Well, I was going to say, don't yeah. scamp, Dan. No. You've got two cups there. Let's just yeah, we're gonna, go we're for gonna it. Yeah, we're going to go crazy, yeah. <laughs> All right. Then we're going to come back and just kind of... Somebody's going to take those and put them in my bag, just so you know. <laughs> Make sure we get it custard all the way up to the top. Then what I would do is I would take some hot water, pour it in there, and then cover it with foil, and then stick it in the oven over here. Okay. okay. But and again, these cook at a low temperature. You low said? temperature, about 300 degrees in a regular oven. But again, I hate to say how long. It's you know anywhere from basically hour and 45 minutes to two hours. Usually the last half a uh, half hour, 15 minutes to a half hour. I kind of uncover them so they kind of dry out a little bit on the top, mm -hmm. get a little color on them, okay? All right. Make sure that it just all gets, everything gets pressed down in there. If it goes over the, over the edge, don't worry about it. All right. Now we're going to come over here and 
put those in the oven later because we don't have enough time to bake them all the way anyway. Right okay. Now. okay. Okay. We have some that are already baked just to kind of show how to do it. Now, this is a, kind of a, a, um, a nice technique back on the phyllo. A couple of these sheets are torn, and that's okay. You can, if it's torn up, just don't bother with it. Just go ahead and discard that. Okay. We'll keep the towel over top of it. We have our sugar, cocoa butter, have some sugared ramekins, pastry brush, clarified butter, another thing that kind of scares people. To get the clarified butter, we do this because we don't want a lot of water in. American butter that's made in this country has anywhere from 18 to some people say 20, over 20 percent water and, and, and really? milk, milk solids and such inside. So you have to kind of cook that out. If you use a European style butter, there's, there's less water in it and you can, uh, you just can, you can, you don't really have to clarify, you just, you just cook it for a little while. Same with this, you don't really have to clarify it all the way down, you just want to get as much of that water out as possible, as, as possible, because you don't want to get a lot of water on the field, otherwise it won't make it soggy. Okay. So you're just okay. heating it until it melts? Well. This is clarified. To make the clarified butter is a little tricky. The way, the way you have to do that is you have to, uh, got another torn piece there. You have to put it on the stove and you have to cook it until it's, uh, until it's, uh, yeah, this is traveled away, so some of these are kind of torn up. Let me turn it over. Um, you have to bring it to, a, bring it to a boil and then turn it down and let it simmer for about 15, 20 minutes and then all the water will cook away and it'll stop boiling. But you have to watch it very carefully for a couple of reasons. One, it can boil over, which is dangerous. Mm -hmm. And two, it can burn. So once, once it, you, you boil away the water in there, you have to immediately strain it into another pot uh, and you only have about, about a minute or so from the time it's, it's clarified to the time it can be burned. So you wanna make sure you, you watch that. But again, you can just, if you're gonna use regular uh, butter, you can just boil it for you know 10 or 15 minutes or so. Just watch it, and it doesn't have to be all the way clarified. Just want to get as much of that water out, you know, if, as okay. possible. It's better it's better to under clarify it than to burn it. Obviously. Makes sense. All right, so you want to get that butter all the way around here. Okay. You want to liberally sprinkle on. The cocoa powder and mix with sugar. You can use I use cinnamon too, sometimes uh -huh. for, for for different for different uh, different taste profiles. Along profile. with the, the cocoa, you mean, or uh, no itself? no it's just cinnamon sugar. Oh I see. Yeah, then you want to just kind of gather it together. Kind of put it inside of a cup. Okay. Uh-huh. And then we'll put a little bit more butter on top of it, a little bit more sugar. And then this goes in like a 375 degree oven for about 10 minutes until it gets nice and brown. And then a lot of times you'll have to take it out and dry it out. So you take it out, let it sit about five minutes, and then reduce the heat of the oven and put it back in the oven so you dry it all the way out, all the way through. We'll go ahead and make a couple of these. And then we'll go ahead and plate it up. Okay. So when you do bake it, you're wanting it to get to a nice golden brown color? Golden brown, correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. And I, I have some that I've already baked that I'll go ahead and garnish the plate with. If you were going to make another dessert or something, this is the same way you always have to work with feel. You put butter on it or, uh, and then kind of layer, sometimes with breadcrumbs, sometimes with nuts, uh, nuts and breadcrumbs, and then kind of layer it and layer it and layer it, and that's what gets the the flakiness of the uh, of the dough. So that's and baklava. That's yeah, that's baklava, spanakopita, those types of uh, you know strudel, mm -hmm. uh, Austrian style strudel. You can also just cr crumple it up like this and put it on a sheet pan if you want, just like that, and bake it like that. But I kind of like it to be make a little height like that. So we'll make one more. All right, and then we'll go ahead and. Through the magic of TV land, pull out our bread puddings and plate them up. Shh, you're not supposed <laughs> to give away the secrets. <laughs> you don't want to be.
skimpy on the butter. Butter makes it better. That's Isn't exactly that right, say? you know, exactly right. You know, how many years ago was it they were saying everybody should eat margarine, and now they're saying you gotta stay away from not eat butter because of the trans fats. So, you know, if you have moderation with things, I think you'll be I fine. I say go with the butter, you're right, you're right. Right. All right, we'll get this out of the way and clean up. All right, so those will go. After I'll, I'll butter each one and put some more sugar on top like I did the first one in a hot, a hot oven. And uh, then they'll be ready to go. And you can, you can store, those, those don't have to be stored right away. They can sit out uh, as long as it's uh, room temperature for a while. After they've baked or after you mean before after you they're bake baked, them? correct, okay. yeah. I mean, I wouldn't let them sit out you know, a couple of days or anything like that, but you could set them out for an hour or so. So during dinner until you serve dessert yes. would be fine? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm going to plate up, plate up the, uh, the bread pudding after it's baked. I pull it out, let it come room temperature, still warm, but I can take it out of the water so it won't burn, won't burn my hand. The chocolate sauce, again, I make this with a syrup. Okay, so I use sugar and water. I cook it on the stove, but let it boil for about five minutes or so. Take it off the stove, put my chocolate into it, mix it around, put it back on the stove if I need to melt the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Then I put some heavy cream and some brandy in there. So Great. it's really, really tasty. Sneaking in the brandy. Exactly. And you use the same chocolate that you put I in did. into the bread pudding? I did. Yep. Okay. Yep. But you could use other chocolates too. But because it's, um, it's good chocolate and it's very thick, I need to kind of mix it up real good. That's what I'm doing now. Okay, so I have two sauces. And again, at home people always ask how to make things look like restaurants. So again, you have to have good mise en place. The stuff ready. You make the sauce. You can make these a day ahead. Or, so this you could make actually a week ahead and be fine. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to uh, put the chocolate sauce, a ring on the plate, okay? I'm going to show you two ways. I'm going to do one with the sauce on here, and then I'm going to show you the, the other way to plate the other one. So you can kind of, this way you can see how to put the sauce on there. But you, what you really want to do for plate up is you'd want to put the, the bread pudding on the plate first by turning it upside down like this, and then it. Uh -huh. okay. There's that piece of paper. Don't want to forget that. Okay. <laughs> now the reason I'm going to do two, two, two of them here is because I, I want you to see kind of how I do the sauce there a little bit. And I got to scratch my nose. All right. So we've got the sauce and we kind of, you can swirl it together. You can see, hopefully in the camera a little bit there, how that kind of looks. It makes it kind of like a nice spider web design. Now I like to put the uh, chocolate sauce on the plate in the middle and then the, the, the lighter cream, uh, cream anglaise, vanilla sauce around the outside because that, that runs so that way it keeps it in the middle. Okay, so the chocolate's a little heavier. Yes, yes. All right. So now we'll do it on here. You won't have to, you won't be able to see it in the camera as well, but this is the better way to plate the way I'm doing it right now because otherwise I'd have to turn it out and then take it on a spatula and, and put it on there. And don't be shy with the sauce. You guys getting that over there? All right. That looks really there beautiful. We and we take our baked phyllo crisp, mm -hmm. put that on top. Some powdered sugar. And there you have it. Beautiful. I'll put this other one together there for you too. Paper off. Filo crisp. Coco, Coco Filo Crisp. A little powdered sugar. Kind of accent it. And there you have it. Chocolate cherry bread pudding with a Coco Filo Crisp. Cream anglaise and chocolate sauce. Beautiful, Dan. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome. Thanks to Dan Pliska for joining us today. I'm Emily Bierman, and this is Cooking with Me.